This episode of Important If True is brought to you by Quip. Electric toothbrushes suitable for your home, for travel, for anywhere else. And if you go to tryquip.com slash thumbs, you can get $10 off your first brush head refill sent every three months. That is tryquip.com slash thumbs. Okay. Mm. Okay. Podcast. I'll just tell you guys my dream right now. No, no you, you, why? You won't. Why? Why? why would you not? Literally, what is the difference podcast? between doing we that versus uh, waiting five minutes? Well, 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 who's to say we're not on a podcast right now? I am. Oh, fine. It's July 13th, 2017. And this is Important If True. From Idle Thumbs, I'm Chris Remo. I'm Nick Brecken. I'm Jake Rodkin. It's good to have that classic back, Nick. It's really just... I, I missed it. Classic it's like read. a throwback jersey. I had to just go back to it for a week. <laughs> Nick. Yeah. I hear you have a dream. Oh, God. All right. So... You, you aired well, in acknowledging that you might have had yeah, a, a wacky dream. Never, never acknowledge a dream. And now I... Now... <laughs> never acknowledge your dreams. My nightmare is that I, <laughs> that I acknowledged my dream. Now uh, I'll prevail upon you to share it with us. Yeah. Well, I think I shared a dream... Is that correct usage? We'll find out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what are we bad at? The podcast. <laughs> so I think I shared a dream. Uh, Was that a question or the name of the podcast? <laughs> Could it be both? I suppose so. <laughs> <laughs> it's our name and slogan. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I think I shared a dream uh, on a previous episode that I was recording an episode of this podcast. I think that's canon. Uh, but I know with canon as well. Much as, I mean, it's just something that it's just something did. that happened. Yeah, let's not go overboard. All right, with canon all right. Here, fair. Uh, so I had a dream the other night that I was playing basketball <laughs> in high school, which is absurd uh, sure. <laughs> for one thing. But did I was having. Any, did you play any sports? I did. I played soccer. Okay, so that's not that ridiculous. No. But, I mean, it is. Okay. Uh, I would, I would not be good it. at basketball. Yeah. So I was playing basketball. I was really happy about it. Like, I was, like, shooting and dunking. I was dunk. I was, like, doing crazy, like, 360 dunks. That's so good, Nick. Just, that you were oh, happy in your Oh, dreams. I was just really just pleased as punch. I was yeah. just so content, like a, like a happy dog. Right. Just running around on <laughs> like the field. Like Air Bud. Yeah. Like, yes, I was Air Bud uh, for a moment. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> then I woke up, and uh, I was in college. And I was talking to my old college roommate and saying, I just had this dream about how I was playing basketball and it was really fun. And I think I want to play basketball in college. Like, I think I want to just play, yeah. try out for the team. Yeah. And he was like, oh, that's great. Uh, cool. That's really exciting. I'm happy for you. Yeah. And then I woke up. <laughs> yeah. And I was on this podcast <laughs> talking about how I, ch- I had had two nested dreams. <laughs> That about basketball <laughs> and then i woke up for real yeah and i like well, here you are <laughs> and here i am but i had a three level dream the top level of which was me explaining the previous two dreams on this podcast so i think <laughs> i think all I, I, I all i can conclude from this is that this podcast is just poisoning my brain <laughs> or something <laughs> that reminds me of an email we got from kevin that says if we truly were living in a and or the matrix and you received the call from Morpheus to wake up, would you? Life lived in ignorance is certainly bliss, at least to the extent that we are blissful in our currently terrifying reality, but can it be considered a life well lived? Good people strive to help others as they can in our world, whether through entertainment, physical aid, or kindness. With the knowledge that the rest of humanity and indeed the real world lies outside of this software, is there a moral obligation to do what you can to help others? What if in your version of the Matrix, the processors are just better and everyone has their own Matrix world? Thus, your podcasts are not even being heard by the, en- the enslaved humans. Then again, I doubt they have Blue Apron in Zion and imagine the lack of shoehorns and electric toothbrushes. Thanks for reading, Kevin. So, uh, S- Nick, I think it's safe to say you would not wake up well if i was like playing basketball right <laughs> if, if i was like, like really good at basketball if you were, if you were yeah. in like dream tier alpha at the base where you were a basketball <laughs> lord you right. would definitely not wake up no. but maybe the one where you Why were just telling you? people about it on a podcast oh yeah i, I would like, wake up from that get out of that and <laughs> save, save humanity as soon as possible yeah. yeah yeah no i don't know I mean, this, the, that's contained in the film The Matrix, this debate. Is it not? <laughs> well, I mean, okay, fine. We're going to talk about this. 
it is morpheus is a piece of shit right because like he says like oh neo i can't possibly tell you what's out there you have to see it for yourself and by the time he sees it he's screwed like he's already so i feel like the question is do you know well, ahead you of time i mean do you, you know ahead of time that your reality will be worse i mean just jumping off what you just said you can tell someone you don't have to i mean the film The Matrix exists. Yes. So it's possible to Was explain that sent to us from outside of The <laughs> Matrix for us to understand The Matrix? <laughs> I can't explain it to you, but I can hand you this DVD I can make of produ- The Matrix. Don't watch the second and third ones. They are not canon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, the fact that there's a... If you go to Wikipedia... There I are also s- seven supporting anime shorts. <laughs> <laughs> you can you've watched several of those. Those are fine. Yeah. I've heard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think the fact that the Wikipedia page for The Matrix, I assume, mm. has a plot section that is functional, yeah. I have to imagine, suggests that maybe, maybe Morpheus is just kind of bad at explaining things. Wait, are you implying that Morpheus exists in a world where he could have literally pointed to the Wikipedia page for the movie The Matrix? No, I'm saying that someone... I'm so confused. No, I'm <laughs> saying that someone on the internet, just some person on the internet, was capable of going to wikipedia.org and typing in an explanation of what The Matrix is to fulfill the requisite plot section on the Wikipedia page for The Matrix. So surely Morpheus, who has spent a, like, I assume decades like thinking about this and doing trying to do something about it could probably like rise to the challenge of explaining what that is right Morpheus just internalized the sort of movie uh, storytelling rule of show don't tell and he was like (laughs) it would be really bad (laughs) it would would be really bad it's gonna be way cooler yeah just just like your mind is like totally blown in this next moment he's like he's like look if i literally just told you all about it and then we're fucking there like 10 minutes from now it's gonna seem really (laughs) stupid because you'll be like yeah you don't this is just what you said it was (laughs) it's like a surprise party yeah Yeah. Uh, don't just uh you know they're all waiting on the other side you door. can be told what the Matrix is, but it's far sicker if you would see it for yourself. <laughs> Take I believe, this pill. <laughs> I believe it's a classic <laughs> Matrix quote. I wonder yeah. how they manufactured those pills. Was that explained ever? <clears throat> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Probably in the anime short. I, I, I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. No. Uh, who's, who's to say? I don't know, I'm just wondering. What are... <laughs> It's been a while since I've seen. No, or no one can. Or no one can be told the how these pills are made. <laughs> just eat it. You have to eat. Eat them. the fucking pill. Just eat them. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. I. The blue pill is just uh, it's just sort of a sugar. It's just a placebo. But the red pill <laughs> is a placebo. <laughs> but I've told when I told you what the Matrix is so convincingly, the right. placebo will have right. the effect of yeah producing incredible. You know. Uh, I. Yeah, the Matrix. The Matrix sort of committing suicide by way of the second and third movies means that we're never going to have the tie-in novel that explains like Morpheus's covert pill manufacturing plant. That's actually like I disagree. I think that that makes that more likely because a film tie-in novel is the cheapest thing ever to produce. And but you, who will buy one? I guess the uh, same people who would otherwise buy one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, I'm serious. That's fair enough, right? Yeah. I mean, probably actually the age of film novelizations is maybe, I would think maybe past its prime. Oh, I don't know about that. Is that, is that true? Well, I don't know. I'm just sort of speculating now wildly. They definitely like, still exist, but whether they're past their prime, Well, I, don't I think know. traditionally the reason they existed is because it was a way to sort of extend something that there's like hunger for more yeah. content around this like film or property or whatever but a book is so much cheaper to produce than a new film. But now we just make <clears throat> infinite movies of anything that is successful. So it's yeah, well, but you can were, you can blow out that universe in books, and then you can just sell them as Kindle food to people. I think that's which is true. probably why mm, that's and, true. You know, but also the shelves of like when you get into the sort of genre shelves of any bookstore, there's still just about two hundred billion books about. Like, let's go. Let's read some Halo. Uh, yeah, that's true. Novels. Yeah, mm. they're still around. Um, I just looked on the internet uh-huh uh, oh to find this i just typed matrix where do the pills come from 
<laughs> and there's no answer. But really? surely people have asked this. <clears throat> did it, did it f- fulfill? Can you go the to like the, Quora the, or whatever? I will admit that I, that I will admit that I only looked on page one because at this point, if it's not on page one of Google, um, I mean, it just gets so buried by like what's the what's the red pill and what does it mean to be red pilled? Blah 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 mm. blah. And yet, no one no one has questioned where these pills came from. These that allegedly wake you up to the truths that you haven't seen. <laughs> Who's making them? The pill is actually a tracing program that disrupts the carrier signal of the pod human's mind. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I assumed that the red pill is actually just some sort of source code that they sneak into the matrix. I guess it is. I guess, I guess. It, Chris, the, it's all a constructed the reality. only exist, I suppose, inside the matrix itself anyway. Yeah, Morpheus And if just you can learn how to, like, yes. be a wizard in the matrix like Neo does... I guess you can learn how to just... Yeah, Morpheus is basically saying, eat this meme JPEG that I snuck <laughs> into the Matrix. <laughs> eat this meme. <laughs> eat this GIF. She hands <laughs> Neo, she hands Neo the red pill, then Neo looks really closely and it sort of refracts through to just the picture of Morpheus saying, what if I told you? And it's like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Remember we saw, okay, like an hour ago, we saw that, I don't know what... Oh, the you, e-ink dress? Oh, the e-ink Yeah, there's like yeah. a dress that, I don't, uh, Jake, I think you found it, I don't know where it came from, but you found I, I a, think it was from a, either a technology or a fashion show in Japan. Yeah. Someone has made a, a dress that is made out of sort of like pleated e-ink paper yeah and so the entire dress i mean it's like a neck to down to like i don't know calves i guess yeah length dress and the entire thing has can be sent a video signal i guess i don't know what exactly i think since it's, I think since it's e-ink it can just crossfade between still images like i don't think that it's a full like active okay. display but all i could think of when i saw that and which now is conf- like furthered by this is someone just walking around with that thing changing to images of fucking minions and stuff. <laughs> and now that's all I can think of in terms of like the woman in the red dress in the Matrix. In the Matrix? Yeah, after Neo takes his like meme JPEG pill and then w- wakes up to his new reality. Yeah. Uh, so that's gross. Probably <laughs> Morpheus just puts... So I think my answer is no, I would definitely not wake up. Mm. I would definitely choose to not Given to that, not given that waking up actually may be Morpheus just putting some like AR glasses on you that put a bunch of ads uh, in regular <laughs> yeah. Earth and yeah. then tells you you're good at stuff. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't do that yeah. for sure. I don't the AR glasses just allow you to see the stupid meme glasses dropping onto Morpheus's face. <laughs> <laughs> what the deal with it glasses? Yeah, the deal with it glasses. Yeah. Oh god, this is so stupid. <laughs> and then he just sort of smiles and then like sort of right. wiggles his head around so you god. can see that they're sticking right, to his yeah. head correctly. <laughs> this actually reminds me of a Sorry, the Matrix is just the internet. Sorry. Right, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> fuck. Sorry. <laughs> oh god. god. This actually reminds me of a different email we got. From Kevin Hanline, which I, I think this must be a different Kevin, because the other Kevin didn't didn't put his last name. Um, it's who, the same Kevin. Just you trying. Think so? to, no. Okay. Because uh, this Kevin writes, "Hey thumbs, I've been thinking a lot about internet humor and memes lately. It seems we're churning through new funny jokes at a faster and faster rate because I think of how easily jokes and images can be disseminated and how quickly they're digested and remixed to the point of being overused and overly familiar. I wonder if we'll hit a kind of meme singularity where irony wins and nothing is funny since there's no time for it to even be funny. Essentially, what do you guys think is the future of jokes on the internet?" And now, all I can think of here is that there is actually going to be a, like, sort of, the singularity moment is actually going to be a divergence from people who effectively live on the internet and people who don't, where people who live on the internet basically are living in the joke matrix, where every <laughs> goof and gag and meme and joke, <clears throat> you you see the, the, the you, you are the, like, fourth expanding brain... <laughs> <laughs> sort of phase where you see right, all of it the sort of fourth dimensional array of all of this content and how it interconnects yeah, yeah. and you <laughs> and and so like all jokes basically become fully exhausted the instant they're created but meanwhile That's everyone just, who doesn't just live on the <clears throat> internet still just thinks like a funny minions picture is funny because they're just a, like right. a normal no, person see, living I feel like, in the world I feel oh. like it's only I feel like it's only the case that you are the fourth dimensional connection if you actually are like Neo like I think the end of the movie instead of him seeing the code it's just he sees all of the memes just like popping up constantly but I think everybody else is in service of that yeah, I feel like everything no, else is a meme no I think it will be a class of person who mm. is all that person and that class of person and then uh, they they believe 
that all of the rest of the world is feeding their content to create their sort of multi multi dimensional constant uh, meme cycler and the people out in the rest of the world who have like a st- stupid minion bed sheets that they bought from paint all over me think that the internet people are making them the content oh, oh man yeah and then um. and then yeah oh that's <clears throat> that's terrible and brilliant. It's, it's really spun by them collectively are, holding each other in contempt the yeah. actual then matrix robots are one tier above that watching this like cycle just saying good good, good. and there's like why are we doing this I, I don't know <laughs> We love minions the same as everyone else. <laughs> they think they love it ironically, but they really love it. They think they love it genuinely, but ah, who knows? And we just enjoy watching the process. Yeah. It all comes down to slapping a minion on everything. Well, good. This was the, the most idiotic conclusion to this conversation <laughs> possible. Welcome minions, on. of course, being the yellow pill. <laughs> no one actually, no one intentionally takes that pill, but everyone takes but it. But yeah. you've all taken it. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of... <laughs> <laughs> of uh, being ashamed of your content and hiding it away so that no one can find it. I came across a news story that I... That's that why we do a podcast. <laughs> of all possible ways to disseminate yeah. any of our opinions or information, <laughs> we, hi- we, uh, we hide it away. Hide it in an audio file that you download from uh, an XML file. Um, there's, there's an article in the Wall Street Journal about TV networks and Nielsen ratings and what they do when TV shows uh, are predicted to underperform in a given week. Mm-hmm. And the thing that TV networks have started doing increasingly commonly is just misspelling the name of the show for that week. What? what? <laughs> so, like, uh, for instance, <laughs> like... Uh, what does that mean? It means so like the, it means like NBC oh. News Tonight. If oh. it's on, uh, where they're like, "Fuck!" Another TV network has a huge, like a better news has a huge sporting event, so no one's gonna watch NBC right. News Tonight. Yeah. Spell it T O N I T E, so it drops out of the weekly average for the Nielsen oh. ratings for NBC News Tonight. But that N O O Z Tonight. Yeah, I've seen people increasingly finding what they think are like my TV doesn't know how to spell the show correctly. They'll take a picture of their TV listing, and it's like you know some ABC sitcom that's on at a weird time and is named something weird and it's because TV <laughs> networks just hide shit now all over the wow. place and it's it's becoming a thing it, apparently for a while Nielsen was okay with it like yeah okay well sometimes if you're preempted and it, it inaccurately will represent the average viewership because there's a weird outlier yeah. it's okay for you to deliberately slightly tweak the name of your show to drop it out of the ratings algorithm for this <clears throat> week but like anything that is uh you know very algorithmically tracked and whatever else tv networks have now or they're Just like gamed it exactly the how far can we push this before nielsen gets mad uh, and I guess what they didn't predict, <clears throat> predict, which is stupid, is that their advertisers would get mad because now ad agencies oh, are like, fuck, oh, we have to track both versions of this show. <laughs> we have to hunt through yeah. and find all the versions and make them disclose all the times that it's aired. And uh, like advertising, wow, advertising salespeople yeah. are like, so now we have to, every time we take a show to a new client, we have to be like, okay, this is what NBC says. This is its Nielsen rating. Here's what the show actually does on TV. And here's where your advertisements actually run. Uh, yeah, that's incredible. How is that? But like, yeah, call, call, they, call it your nightly it? news like, news tonight with an I T E <laughs> is like just standard as fuck at this point. Wow. So apparently that's being like reevaluated finally now in the, in the next yeah. couple of weeks because it's been pushed so far that there's just like how long has this been going on? Did you say? I don't know. A while. Like it's it's, it's wow. it was a standard thing for a long time for the sort of like suddenly a big presidential announcement I comes know. up and you and preempts yeah. your news and it's yeah. like a one off uh, outlier or I mean, like that that sort of thing but like those ad contracts are for like millions of dollars yeah. i don't we do i mean our other podcast idle thumbs has an ad rep and if we just like don't upload our ad spots in time someone sends us an email and it's like right. hey guys really need that thing oh and that's like the tiniest stupid deal <laughs> ever compared to like how like they're like oh that that ad ran in in idol v ums <laughs> uh, which was um very successful <laughs> <laughs> i just don't understand why do they even also why do they fucking care like if their show doesn't show up at all like why is that preferable well, does it, does, to, are I they looking at an overall because average? Your, your weekly yeah. or monthly average <clears throat> looks higher because the shitty yeah. outlier is I know, cult. it just seems weird that from Nielsen's end, they don't have some record of what's on television. I think that they do, but they system. allow they allow the reporting to take, to just, yeah, yeah. They, they sort of looked, turned a blind eye to it. 
for long enough that people thought, oh, maybe it's okay for us to abuse this. And now they're like, yeah. ah, no, please stop renaming your television shows to make them look God, better. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Man. <laughs> So, if we ever release an episode called Important If True T-R-U, uh, you know that we think that it's a bad episode of the podcast <laughs> and we're trying to hide it. But we'll just put it out on the same RSS feed. And uh, and no one will find it still. And it's yeah, fine. yeah, yeah. Nobody, nobody cares. Because it's a podcast. Equally few people will <laughs> be disappointed. Important If True T-R-O-O. <laughs> I just like the idea of this. Stu- I mean, it's like this is, I mean, speaking of the meme singularity, mm. eventually everything will just somehow find a way to be rolled into it's just i mean it's like one of those things it's like the um uh final destination right like (laughs) nielsen's gonna put the kibosh on this but there will just be some other way for like Mm. this idiocy to assert itself sure somehow i don't know yeah it's like final destination They're they're cheating death right it's just that well the thing that we think we're cheating is like our uh complicity in the ultimate like meme singularity minions reality but i feel like you're like one expanding brain above me (laughs) never mind i don't know what i'm talking about or do you i I definitely don't yeah people who are on your level are like oh it's so true (laughs) no it's so 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 (laughs) tro actually speaking of speaking of uh of words being being sort of improperly interpreted Rebecca writes. Hello. This is a good jump. Thank Very you. Well I'm, I'm really pleased with my segues. S e g w a y. Yes. <laughs> well, that's that's relevant. So, uh, Rebecca writes. Hello, Chris, Jake, and Nick. It's been recently pointed out to me that I pronounce words that start with S T R, such as street, straight, and strap, improperly. I pronounce street closer to street, for example. I've accidentally hoisted myself, however, by asking people if I do pronounce STR words weirdly. After I ask people about it, they become hyper aware of it and laugh at me. My question is, are there any words you pronounce weird that you've never noticed until it was pointed out to you? Love the show. Love the friendships. Love you guys. Stay sweet. Mishi. The first thing that occurred to me when I read this was that like eight years ago on Idle Thumbs, I think Nick... You mispronounced the word segue as seg. I assume because you had never heard it pronounced in life before. I think because so. Because it is not a... Yeah. I don't <clears throat> think it's a, that commonly said of a word. No. You're more likely to sort of read it in like a review of something mm-hmm. than you are to talk about it. And we that somehow just turned into a really... One of the sort of dumbest and most pointless ongoing callbacks on that show where the entire joke was simply that we pronounced the word segue as seg. Yeah. And that is sort of weirdly occasionally continued even onto this podcast sometimes. For me, that's because the word seg ended up being like either apostrophe yeah, S-E-G a, or S-E-G apostrophe and that became to me a fictional industry term for a very well handled uh, mm. impromptu transition in a podcast. There you go. So the, I mean, I guess the thing to do about this is just act like your version of it is a subtle. Oh, I'm talking tweak. about a street. And I'm talking about a street. Uh, <laughs> oh, I guess also you can sort of pitch yourself as a sort of um, classic, early mid century sort of uh, like adorable town drunk or something, mm. and then that's. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you, can, you can get some mileage out of that <laughs> yeah, as well. That's true. That's true. Street. That's pretty good. <laughs> just, yeah. <laughs> You're just a character from Crazy Cat or something? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You've got your bindle, is maybe. That, mm. Is that that comic? That was super old comic with the cat Yeah, with the Crazy bindle? Cat, maybe Pogo. Yeah. Yeah, one of those. Yeah. yeah Classic Americana. Yeah. Anytime you say yes, it's yesh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure that I'm full of them. Yeah. And no one has corrected me on them. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually how it happens yeah once you pass a certain threshold i think of age people people are like who aren't like really close to i mean yeah if it's like a family member or something it's one thing but if it's just some sort of other adult you encounter in passing you're not gonna 
you're not going to bother saying anything, no. right? No. Yeah. Well, it's too awkward. Yeah. I, I mean, I couldn't handle the, the moment of that. <laughs> of being the person who points it out? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, it's it, not worth it to me. Let sure. him just hang himself forever. I, I don't want to be inconvenienced. <laughs> if they, if they make a similar mistake in text, however, mm. everyone will be very fast. Oh, yeah, that's true. To tell them which there they should have used. Mm, that's Wh- true. Which your they yeah. should have used. Yeah. Um, that they included an sh before the word street. That's actually a case where the less that's a that's a case where it works in the opposite direction, where the less related you are to that person, and the less you even know them or have ever been mm-hmm. aware they exist, the more likely they are to let you know what you've done. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. Hmm. I knew a kid once that that I say kid. I think he was probably in college, and he he would pronounce chaos as chaos. <laughs> oh wow. I had a friend in high school who pronounced chaos chaos. Chaos, chaos. Yeah, I think I heard that as well. Yeah. 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 Yep, that's a thing. That must be a big one. Chasm as well, she said. In fact, I think we've talked about chaos on this podcast <laughs> in the past. Mm, maybe. Yeah. 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 Both words that, you know, probably there isn't a lot of call for. No. Until you learn a, what the matrix is, <laughs> and then you realize you're living in a world of chaos. <laughs> uh, one, more, one more quick email here, I guess. Um, Jesse writes... On May 27, 2013, Bennett Foddy tweeted, "She uh, Bennett Foddy is a internet man who makes, he's a, well, he's actually, I mean, he's like a sort of professor of philosophy, I believe, right? Yeah, but he teaches uh, game design. But he, he teaches game design, and he's a good person. Uh, and he, he made a great game called Quop. Anyway, on May 27, 2013, Bennett Foddy tweeted, she's lump, she's lump, she's lump, she's now also in your head. Uh, as his friend and agent of Karmic Retribution, I've made it my duty to once every eight to ten months fave this tweet so it shows up in his notifications and then unfave it the next day so the cycle can begin again. Do you have any similar schemes in which you enact extremely mild revenge over a long span of time? Best, Jesse. P.S. Sorry that you now also have lump in your head. I do. Ever since I put this email on the <coughs> list, I have had lump by the President of the United States of America stuck in my head. So yeah. thanks, Jesse. Uh, there's a really, <coughs> my favorite example of this is something Nick has perpetrated that I have, uh, that I have, it's not really revenge, I suppose. Oh, oh, oh. But, are you oh. talking about, are you talking about Spazzo? No. <laughs> Wait, what? No, I want to hear about this. Oh, no, that's another Nick-related uh, uh, revenge slash prevenge situation, but let's hear yeah. your example first, Chris. This, this well, my is example better. is, no, it's not, but my example <laughs> is just that uh, my now wife, then girlfriend, tweeted a tweet about she was in grad school at the time and she tweeted about getting an A in her econometrics class and uh, Nick you posted a tweet in reply I guess take tr- attempting to take I mean successfully taking her down a peg uh, by pointing out that maybe in fact she got an A in her egocentric class uh, at which point I don't remember why but you sort of started a campaign to get people to fave that tweet <laughs> I don't know why either. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I made a website remember. for it at egocentricclass.com. Yeah. And now <laughs> I set myself a calendar reminder every year on the anniversary of that tweet mm-hmm. to fave and retweet it again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's a very pointless, annoying thing. It is really pointless. That we, that but it's we not revenge. Perpetrate. No, it's not really revenge. Yeah. What is the Spazzo thing? <laughs> I don't know if I have permission to tell this story on this <laughs> yeah. podcast. I mean, you can if you want. I... Uh, Nick at one point I'll tell a story about Nick okay. uh, well, we, Have we talked about Dr. Spezzo on this podcast yeah, yeah, yeah. before? Okay, yeah, Dr. Spezzo being the text-to-speech uh, like psychologist AI bot that you can make mm-hmm. say things in sort of a bad robot like voice yeah. uh, For a while Nick when at a previous job apparently uh, took one of these speakers from his PC and put it next to the sort of foam partition between his cubicle and the next person's cubicle and turned the volume down very low and would just leave Dr. Spezzo running in a DOS terminal and occasionally just make it say things to uh, the person on the other <laughs> side of the cubicle wall. Like what? Um, just, just basically like anti- like like mildly antagonistic <laughs> things. Like, like, oh God, I can't, I can't use his name. I'll call him Frank. Sure. <laughs> it's like, Frank, Frank, are you working, Frank? Or are you not, are you wasting time, Frank? Frank, you're fired, Frank. I, you're fired, you're fired, you're fired. <laughs> I mean, just like, yeah. just stupid things. And then he got fired <laughs> one day oh, no. and it was terrible. Oh, no. Because, uh, yeah, I think it was like, literally a day where I had been sort of like, you know. P- Did he know it him. was you doing it? Um, I mean, I, I must assume. 
<laughs> it was sort of an indirect sound, though. Yeah, it's, yeah. It I can't literally really was a small voice whispering through the walls at him that knew things about him. Yeah. How long did you did this campaign? Oh, a long time. Like, yeah, just months. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's fu- I, my memory of it is not. I told this story on a different podcast, and I think I had a better version of it because it's been a while. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, it was. Uh, it's Doctor Spence. Were you though. were you enacting revenge? Were you exacting? Re- I guess exacting is the word I mean. Um. No. No, you just, no, it's you not, just it's decided. Just, yeah, I it just was just torture. Yeah, basically. I yeah. mean, you'd have to sort of know the guy to kind of understand the, you know. But it was really you just turning another human being into your plaything for your own amusement at work. Right. Like, it's actually just you yeah. being a villain. Yeah, basically. Yeah. 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 So I'm just a, a villain, I guess. <laughs> I'm just a really shitty person. But, I, but it, yeah. it stuck with me. Yeah. Probably because you've planted a Dr. Spazzo speaker near me that is <laughs> <laughs> reminding me. All the time, yeah, mm-hmm. to keep me under your thumb. Yeah, yeah. Let's take a break. This episode of Important If True is brought to you by Quip. Well-designed, simple electric toothbrushes that are sent to your home with brush head refills every three months. That cadence, you've got uh, pretty locked down at this point. Mm-hmm, I got it locked down, just like that uh, built-in timer on the Quip. <laughs> toothbrush that will <laughs> lock down the cadence of your brushing habits mm. every, every 30 seconds <laughs> every, it's true <laughs> every 30 seconds so that you can uh make sure you're getting the full two minutes yeah. of brushing your teeth something i never i definitely never used to do um and it's a nice convenient thing if you go to tryquip.com slash thumbs you can get ten dollars off your first brush head refill uh, they come every three months. They make sure that you've always got a nice new brush head. They uh, you can get a plan that comes with the toothpaste. They send you a new battery to swap battery to swap out, so you don't need to order anything else. You don't need to go buy anything else. Uh, everything you need for your electric toothbrush uh, is just sent to your home, all taken care of, with a little booklet that tells you how to brush your teeth right because you're probably doing at least some of it wrong. You Most baby. of it. Yeah. Tryquip.com/thumbs. For $10 off your first brush head refill. (laughs) This episode of Important If True is also brought to you by Casper. Casper makes mattresses and other uh, fine bedding products that are mailed to you. They make uh, mattresses, pillows, sheets, all the stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you go to caspertrial.com slash thumbs... Uh, and use the code that will that'll be displayed on the page there. You can currently, I don't know how long this deal will last, but you can currently get $75 off when you buy a Casper mattress and any other product. Uh, okay. Yeah, Nick, how is, you've now, you've been sleeping on that Casper Just for quite some time now. Casper. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. My favorite feature is still that um, I can move around and not wake up my significant other. Uh, ah. The other night, actually... Um, sometimes Janelle takes my glasses off my face because I forget to before I fall asleep. <laughs> and so she took them off and put them on yeah. her nightstand. But then I was like awake and just felt like looking at my phone for a minute. Mm-hmm. And so I sort of reached over top of her and did this crazy like acrobatic move to carefully pluck sort my glasses. Sort of like glasses. a Matrix-esque. Yeah. Neo, yeah like right. In slow move. motion kind yeah. of, you know, shifting you forms. You woke up. And, like, into the matrix. Right. You woke up from your slumber I on took your the Casper red pill, into the matrix. Woke up, grabbed my glasses. Out of the matrix. Whatever. Right. However the f- fuck. Either way. Yeah. I got those glasses back. But she, she didn't, she wake, didn't up. wake up at all. She took the blue pill. Right. Take sleeping on a Casper is like taking the blue pill every night. You don't wake <laughs> up. I mean, you do in the morning. It's just that it's just in the middle of the night that you don't wake up. <laughs> Well, your red-pilled well boyfriend is creeping around <laughs> on top of you. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, oh, no. We've gone down a terrible hole. Oh, yeah. we've gone down a, 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 a rabbit hole, Chris? Are we oh, through the looking off. glass? Oh, my God. Oh. Okay. Follow. If you go to caspertrial.com <laughs> slash thumbs, use the code there on the screen, you can get $75 off the Casper mattress and plus any other product. You get 100 days risk-free to see if you like it. You probably will. Mm. That is caspertrial.com slash thumbs. <laughs> I'm sorry that I said what I said. <laughs> oh, but it was, God. she's sleeping soundly. He's kicking ass. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> As the film footage then is just like yeah. a paranormal activity, like night <laughs> static shot of someone going, Wait. oh, sort yeah. of fumbling for their glasses yeah, on yeah. the nightstand. <laughs> Casper. <laughs> 
But there's just a pile of jibs in the corner or something. In like, <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> it's like the PC gamer. What? <laughs> I'm just thinking like the PC gamer version of that where it's yeah, just, that's just a room it's like a calm of... scene, but then there's just oh, in yeah, the, in yeah, the yeah, fucking yeah, corner, yeah, there's yeah. just blood and yeah, guts. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Anyway, just a beautiful nighttime scene with two people asleep, but one of them has like the light of their phone, and then in the <laughs> right. darkness around them, right, it's yeah. just like disemboweled just rib cages and, fucking, and yeah. just little yeah. toilets. Exactly. Yeah, definitely a gross toilet with just yeah corrosion and it's disgusting. Classic. Uh, you gotta have that corroded toilet. Yeah, I don't know why, but for some reason you do have to. It's just an advertisement. It just makes you want to play a video game. All right, I think we're back. Johnny Driggs writes, For some reason I've been thinking of the scenario of what the whole world would be like if I were completely average in every way. Obviously, most people are somewhere around average in a lot of aspects of their lives, but what if all my attributes as an individual were the exact mean for everyone? How do you think this would apply to you? How would society change if you were the exact midpoint for everything you could measure about a person? You'd stay exactly the same, but the world will be altered, so you'd have the average height, weight, eyesight, cognitive ability, etc. as the population at large. The average amount of alcohol people drink and meat people eat would now be based on your consumption. The political landscape would be balanced upon the idea that your views would be the most middle-of-the-road centrist position possible. Also, you would be hosting the average number of podcasts a person usually does. <laughs> Applying to this, to this to the world at large gets things super out of whack quickly, so you can just apply this to the United States. So what do you three think would change the most if each of you was now the average American in all aspects? Keep casting that completely unremarkable number of pods, Johnny. Uh. Uh, there'd be way too many fucking podcasts, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Imagine if every single person in the country... Averaged hosting like one to three podcasts a week. There would be way too many podcasts. There would be too many white people. There would be too many men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There'd be people way whiter than us, which is distressing. If we're like the average. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Because, yeah. Because the yeah. whole other half of that yeah. spectrum yeah. Oh, is just terrible. True. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think that it would be good in any way. No, that would be awful. That would be terrible. I think for you as the person who suddenly realized that you were the tipping point statistically for the entire that's country a, that's or like world. That's like a 90s comedy with like Michael Keaton or someone. It's, it would be so distressing. Yeah, yeah, it would. Mm. It would be called Glass Half Full. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I, just thinking about the idea that you wake up under any circumstance and realize that you've become the statistical tipping point for the world you would have to be a very 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 optimistic person in your outlook uh to make that a good experience because anything that you were previously exceptional at you are now literally average at and anything that you were bad uh, yeah. at you're now average you're at. now fine yeah right like you gotta have a real positive outlook for that to be good yeah uh, i mean mm. the things because even the things that you hate about yourself are like well, I still hate them about myself, but now I think but maybe more people have them. Everyone too. Yeah. Most people. Mm. Oh, yeah. Whereas, yeah, the things you could be really proud of, it's like, well, they're oh, just well. they're just average. God, that's bleak. That's oh, really yeah, really bleak. That's why I'm saying it's it is a glass half full, glass half empty thing because you literally that glass only is exactly is a, half. Yeah, there's yeah. half half in it. Mm, yeah. Wow. Ugh. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and that becomes incredible. I, so when I first heard this email, I had thought about it. In, in, in the way of like what if you woke up and you had changed you would to, adopted to become, to become the average, like of the, the, current the set. middle of the right, current right, world right, and like right. that's like okay well I, I'm just a different <clears throat> person now like that's but uh, you know and then, then that it does just like oh what is the life of like literally the average person I mean it, I think I think he's right that doing it global I mean doing it even in one country is well the version where, we, tough, where the entire all statistics have to shift up and down to account yeah. for whatever you are yeah is way more distressing than the version of just like yeah. imagine a person who goes oh I'm the middle like I'm literally the but middle what of that everything even mean like racially gender wise like it's hard to even imagine I don't know what it means for one person to be renormalized to that I mean, okay, admittedly, the country or the entire world would immediately be ruined, but it would show you... So this is my sort of... Uh, we'll, we'll walk into my egocentric class. The uh, <laughs> If this happened, if you woke up and went, wow, I became the average, and everyone has now been re... Like, their, all of their behaviors are, are shifted to account for me as the baseline. Mm -hmm. You would be able to very quickly see trends change in the world and go, oh, I was actually better 
than the rest of the world at that slightly because everyone's like Wait, finance- give me an example of this. Okay, like if if mm. you if you've wondered okay. am I am I better or worse on average than the rest of the world at like managing my personal finances oh. and then suddenly like actual Everybody's, people's personal financial yeah. management goes up slightly on average over 5 years you're like wow I was better at that but then you're like geez but I was actually I my I my house was totally dirtier than everyone else's. Like, <laughs> right. you know. Because everyone's houses just start getting dirty. Yeah, you're like, like oh, jeez. Oh, God, okay. Like, yeah. Uh, I was actually really bad at, like, keeping appointments with my friends, it turns out. Like, because now everyone sucks at that, and it's a national problem. <laughs> you'd, you'd be able to sort of figure out Th- those wow. things you'd spend your whole you'd become the most neurotic person yeah you just obsessively exist. watch trends you and then 50% of the and... of the country would be way more neurotic than you I wonder <laughs> at the same time <laughs> like that's all I that's could think about when I read this yeah. it's just like oh my god would they I'm be... gonna be like averagely like, how can think, I be okay, average here's, here's, when it comes to that that's gonna be horrible do you think that this I'm already gonna this be average, really neurotic do you think this average is like compounding though so if, if yeah I was just gonna ask the same question is it is it from the point when it happens or are you like are you constantly yeah are you constantly oh resetting it are you like a sort of corrector uh, over time can you start fucking with the world by like going to the gym intensely for a month and then stopping and like <laughs> just doing just doing weird like walking a lot more one day I mean like how long does it take for this stuff to filter out Wow, that's intense. Do you, are, do you so become, you're doing all of that while also becoming increasingly paranoid about the choices <laughs> yeah, that oh, other yeah. people are making around you. So yeah. everyone would start like getting fit and living this really like entrenched, shitty like um, through my means, I will like put all of my crappy politics into the world and my right. like my aspirational mm. version of myself, but also just completely freaking out about what what yeah. effect it's yeah. having on the, on the world. Also, become the. <laughs> are you also now the re- the new normalized average for worrying about being the average person? Does everyone in the God. world start becoming in, like Imagine totally as you get, consumed as you by get... worrying that they're like <laughs> average in all respects, even if they're not, even if they're. You know, like I mean, they're going to be worried well, about more than they were before, which was zero. Uh, now that you're, now that this new mm, thing has happened, yeah, yeah. If if that starts, if that has a, some a compounding effect where you are constantly readjusting average, like all the time, the world will just go into a dumpster immediately, oh, yeah. no matter what, no matter what, because yeah. y- you'll just go ah, ah, like you'll yeah, you'll self correct against it. God, you know the people, the only, the happy people would just be all the outliers. Yeah. Right? Because there's still going to be people who are just not near the average and whatever different things. And the person who's the most different to you will be just like the most satisfied per, well, I guess on the like, the, the, the most satisfied people will be the people who significantly outrank you on the like wealth and success end of things. That's the same like, as, I don't yeah, care okay, about the sure. They will notice no difference. They sure. will notice nothing happening. Yeah. Well, they're the 1% the Chris. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean in the way that they already don't need to notice yes. how anything happens. But right. like uh they're looking down on earth going, "Oh, it looks like everyone's acting like Chris Ramo now." Weird. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't know who that is and I don't care. <laughs> I will continue to not give one shit about this. <laughs> Everyone's worried about Chris Ramos' impact on no, I don't know like what the idea that somehow you being I, well, no, but I mean no, the world wouldn't well, know that you're the person. No, they wouldn't. They would just start. Yeah, they would. Just, no one would know. No. I mean, would there be would so would they find out and do a news like a local news? No, story there's no way. There's no way. Yeah, there'd be you no way realize to, to that trace you have this a very. Back. Subtle sort of butterfly effect ripples out over the population after one really intense shift, presumably on the first day that this took effect. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there'd be everyone would have the average of like whether you took the red pill or the blue pill. They would wake <laughs> up from the matrix the average amount. Uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess some of the things would have to be medians, and some would have to be average, right? Like median take the red pill or the blue pill. It would just be based on like. I mean, same with like, there'd be a lot of traits that are more binary right. than yeah. spectrums. You can't really take like half of the red pill. Why not? Just take I mean, half I guess those. I guess you can. I guess you can take a half. God, what would happen there? You'd sort of start going, <laughs> <laughs> and then just sort of go back to sleep. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> we're we're all aware, Chris, of what happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> A thing that this email reminded me of on a just sort of actually interesting about averages note. Oh, or do you have something else wacky? No, I'm just to say? gonna say it fucking sucks that like I don't really care about the Matrix that much one way or the other. Like it's I, it's fun, like it's a cool movie, but given more ma- more minutes just, of this podcast uh, to the Matrix, no, I just like man, it's 
what a disaster that it's impossible to even refer to the concept of like the pills from that movie without just thinking of shitty like men's rights activists and stuff. Just it's, the internet just poisons everything. It's just a, it's just it's just too bad. You could slowly uh, wipe that attitude for out of more people at least statistically by becoming the template human. That's true. Yeah. That's but true. then the fringes would maybe figure it out, and a new pill analogy would show up about how Chris oh Ramos. Oh my god, tastes. you're right. You would be oh, the heart wow. of a real shitty oh, uh, fringe conspiracy, awful. and it, you, you would know that it's the fringe because yeah, you don't believe well. it, and you're <clears> the statistical <throat> center of the world, and you're like, okay, the people, yeah, you. It would make you even more fucked up. Yeah, that's really terrifying. Anyway, what were you going to actually say? Something? Oh, just there's an episode of the podcast 99 percent Invisible mm. called On Average, and it talks about the history of oh, the yeah. notion of. Average Averages, which it sounded like started off in uh, astronomy because thing like celestial measuring devices sucked, so they would have to take dozens and dozens and dozens of measurements and then divide the data by the number of measurements they took. That became increasingly fascinating to sort of the culture at large, and people started measuring everything and averaging it out, which then led to like. I think the the example that episode focuses on is Civil War uniforms were made in small, medium, and large based on three quantized averages of males in the, like, union, mm -hmm. which then turned into the sizing for civilian clothes, which then, like, turned into building, like, seats in, uh, like, pilot seats in fighter pilots, which then was killing a ton of pilots, and they went, oh, it's actually because this is just based on literally the average of an um, adult male in the 1920s so no one can fly these planes and everyone's dying and then they had to make everything yeah. adjustable and uh whatever but yeah well um, they had to actually right design things that you could like move the seat around yeah and, like do all the but, things yeah. uh anyway that's like a tiny encapsulation of one chapter of that episode but it's a really good episode of 99 percent invisible so if you're interested in why averages are bad maybe or when when and when when they are and aren't applicable <laughs> Uh, that's good. We'll add one more place where they're not applicable to the list is what if one person was forced to become the template for all of America? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you're running in the areas in which averages are bad, it's the one in which you weirdly have a creeping effect on the lives of everyone in your nation by yeah. dragging their curves around. Yeah, it was the failed season one of half gl half glass half full. Yeah. Half glass full? Jesus, what am I saying? That's when they changed it for the Nielsen ratings. <laughs> <laughs> That was really good, Nick. I'm proud of you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. We all love that new sound. That's the sound we all make these days. What sound? That's the we're all thinking sound. Oh. Yeah. I don't think I do that. Uh-huh. No, I don't. You did when you walked over there to edit, to start the Logic Project. You really? Were, yeah. You went like... It was, it, huh. We all make that sound now. Huh. Okay. <laughs> I guess it's because I'm the average person. <laughs> God, people would I'm have sucking you into my orbit. <laughs> Katie writes D Y S D T S D O T S D S T D P S T D P S D S T D P T S D S T D S T D P sent from my iPhone. <laughs> and Google replies, Got it. Thank you. What is this? Which I really like because my interpretation of that is Google basically playing it cool and being like, it's like I definitely mm. understood, filed this away, but then sort of slipping in like, what, well, what, is, what is the, I don't actually know, maybe. On the other hand, like, what if that is actually just like encoded and Google has already read, like deciphered the code and knows what they're saying and is responding to that? So you think the what is this is like a phishing thing maybe where it already knows but it's like i it, it's it's trying oh, to it's trying yeah. to like put out feelers to get mm -hmm. more to sort of see what it can like right why, why do you that's know? google testing you in exactly. fact the reader right. of the yeah. email oh of, i see oh, like, oh, oh oh if you oh. Uh, respond with what is this then google knows that you cannot read that language right i see and then our questions email inbox starts uh carrying on a autonomous coded conversation yes with listener katie mm -hmm. uh sent from her iphone yes whereas if we responded with yeah sounds good or whatever it's like oh, okay they know what that means and they, <laughs> it will, it'll, it'll send another different more complicated uh, um, code later right, i'm gonna auto reply with what is this okay then what a weird feature <laughs> you, you by like which it. i mean the r robot encoded 
Oh, you know what's interesting? When you do that auto reply, it also sends the reply back to your own email inbox, which sort of like, like when I replied, it sent it to this person, but also to questions at important of true.com, which makes it seem even more like Google is oh, huh. itself a separate autonomous agent mm. that is like joining the conversation yeah, that, as really, a third That is really entity. interesting. Anyway, let's, let's do a new email. Uh, questions at important of true.com writes, what is this? <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, I, I guess apologize. we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Stay tuned. Um, should we do some uh, endorsements? Yeah, sure. I recommend NBC News tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rare show. It's only on a couple times a month. <laughs> it's only it's on like during the Super Bowl, <laughs> mm. and you know sometimes just on a Thursday night when not a lot of people are not watching the news. I'll go first. Mine's very boring. Uh, can, nice, can nice. With, well, I'm keeping with myself. Um, with your uh, you, the average man. My, yeah, exactly. Uh, so a thing that I bought recently that has given me more pleasure than any average person should want to admit. Uh, but they all will soon. What? When they become, oh, when when they, it becomes yeah, yes, normal. When right, right, yes. Sorry, I, I'm... I have only average intelligence and was not couldn't keep up with <laughs> with outlier Jake. Um, so I bought this is so dumb, but I bought dry goods canisters for my kitchen mm. to just like keep things like rice, pasta, and sugar, mm. and pasta, and like nuts and stuff in. Um, Hear those little vacuum sealers, the little press down. Oh, they're not vacuum sealers. They're just, mm. I mean, you can probably get fancier ones. I mean, the ones I got were very affordable. I'll just, mm. I can link them in the description to this episode. Um, but they're just variously sized, like acrylic containers. And they've got the, that sort of clasping mechanism, the little like metal sort of mm. clasp that you sort of pull, push down and it makes it f- form a tight seal. Um, and I just filled them all up with like the different rices and grains and stuff that we have in our kitchen. And one, it, I it forced me to actually like take everything out of just like the crappy grocery store bulk bags that I bought them in, um, which were just sort of stuffed into cabinets and put them in places. And I just sort of put cheap, like labels on them, just cheap white adhesive labels to say what they are and they also when you've got all these things lined up they make your kitchen look way more legit than it probably actually is at least i found that to be true uh it's sort of classes the place up in a very cheap and easy way uh it's just nice it's nice to see all these things and be like ah it's my pantry (laughs) it's my (laughs) it's my nice Organized pantry, so, average pantry. So ki- yeah. kitchen organization and presentation would definitely trend up slightly over time. Yeah, uh, were you were you slightly, the new average yeah, man? Yeah. yeah, I mean maybe I don't know. Maybe most people's kitchens are are more organized. I'm gonna than mine. just <laughs> just call that one. <laughs> so uh, yeah, these are just uh, dry goods storage for your kitchen. I'll link the ones I got in the description. Uh, I apologize for how lame I am. Um, Never ap- okay. Also, guilt over personal lameness also on the rise true. Uh, uh, across the country these days. People don't know why. Jake, go ahead. I will endorse an article on the internet. Uh, it is an article on the sports site sbnation.com. It is called 17776. Or I don't know how to print, how to list that as 17776. Yeah. Um, also, the the alternate headline of it is what football will look like in the future. I don't even know how to really explain what this is other than to say it's a really enjoyable just sort of web browsing reading experience. Whether or not you care about football or sports coverage or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I for the record, I don't. I definitely don't. Football, uh, to the extent that I care about any sports, which is fairly below average, uh, football, I I just I've just never been interested in football, and I still I, I don't think you need to be to enjoy this weird online experience. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's yeah. <laughs> Put a little bit of time aside and go read this thing, and yeah. you'll have a good time. We'll link it. It is a just a crazy sort of um, f- piece of futurist fiction in told through a web browser with many different methods. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. And, you know, it's about what football will look like in the future. Yeah. Nick. 
Oh, it's by John Boyce. We should mention that. Who does a lot? I of, thought his name was pronounced Bois. Oh, maybe it is John Bois. Classic. Who knows? I don't, uh, don't know. Classic. I always think of it as John Boyce. He does a lot of really good, um, sort of almost. I guess you could sort of say almost experimental internet projects for SB Nation. Yep, he's good. Nick, what do you have? Um, mine actually, I just realized, sort of uh, connects to that, which is this is a uh, I'm endorsing a an iPhone and Android app called Spy Me Sat. Spy and Me Sat. I, yeah, and I am not endorsing this okay. from the perspective of you should actually use this or or necessarily that anybody actually <laughs> needs to use it or That's that what I really this use is it. For. That's well, what these are for. Okay, but here's the thing: I, I I endorse the idea of you downloading this app and looking at it because it's interesting. What it does is so you're endorsing, you, you're endorsing Spy Me Sat awareness. Yeah, well, it's just kind of fun. So like you can. <laughs> So, so to use, to well, it's, use, just, to it's actually interesting. Use. Well, to use, but not to. So anyway, let me just tell you what it is. <laughs> okay. All so, right. So, uh, it's it's an application that allows you to put a pin on a map in the way okay. that you would with Google Maps. Yeah. And then what it does is it shows you every publicly available imaging satellite. Uh, that would ever crisscross that point on the map. Oh wow! And so at that point, it has timers for each what, what is a, satellite. What does that mean? What is a public? What is a? Uh, it's just any any imaging satellite that exists that is not owned by a government or you know that. It, that so like that the ones Google uses. So ones for Google or satellite or data. Yeah, yeah, I mean. yeah, yeah. So so like I, for instance, entered the location of the Ape Research Facility that we discussed on the last <laughs> podcast, <laughs> right. uh, and it pulls up like ten different satellites. Yeah. Uh, in five minutes. The SkySat two will be crossing um, the uh, the location. Oh wow! And it tells you the resolution of the satellite imagery. Oh, wow! So this and is then it allows you to actually purchase an image Whoa. in five minutes that it could take. You what? can task satellites using this app for how it, much money? Uh, like a, a couple hundred dollars to like thousands of dollars, depending on the resolution of the image. Wow! So, oh, so it's it's like that that satellite's going over there, and if you want. The shutter to activate and take a yep. picture at that point. You can oh, so it spy sat me. It's yes, you can just rent a spy satellite now <laughs> on your phone. Uh, and <laughs> there are like the reason I know about this is that there's a blog called Thirty Eight North, uh, which covers like North Korean sort of security issues and stuff. And they use this thing just to take pictures of like launch facilities and stuff, so that they have their own imagery and can just like wow. analyze it. But you can also just do dumb shit with it, like just take a picture of your house. So like, if we ever weird. have if we ever have an important if true meetup, it needs to be in a spot that has an exposed <laughs> public space, <laughs> just like, and we need to buy the highest oh, yeah. resolution photo oh, possible of all of us right. holding up just stupid just yellow and black s- cards. That's yeah. important if true yeah. right yep anyway I think the existence or that all point at of, Chris Ramo right uh, yeah. uh, America's average male <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing yeah. what a weird world we live in that's that was my takeaway yeah it's very interesting the number of things that are just available to APIs now is yep. incomprehensible pretty much I mean it's actually hard to wrap your mind around yeah yeah I had no idea this existed I didn't so either all of those so, so these are all non-governmental you said so the I, I mean, think some of them actually are, but they're made public. They're right. available for you to sort of who, task. Like, I assume that this one doesn't have access to all of them. Like, there's no law that that any companies who operate these have to like sell. Yeah, people they must photos. They must right? have an I agreement mean, with these with yeah. the runs some of these. Them. Yeah. yeah, but it's a shocking number of satellites. Like just dozens. I, know, I, and I dozens. believe it. I mean, I yeah. I assume from the perspective of the people operating these, the extra revenue is. Yeah. Why not? Right. I mean, it, te- it gives you information on each satellite. So you actually, so this one uh, that would cross in five minutes is run by the Korean Aerospace Research Institute, uh, and then it just tells you when it was launched and everything. It's crazy. It's just it's a crazy application. Anyway, I was, I, I, just the existence of it is is fascinating. But the fact that you can also just mess around with it and buy an image of whatever you want to is just yeah, that baffling. is crazy. That's yeah. that's incredible. Yeah. I mean, how how uh, if there's one, I wonder if you could just sort of follow a friend around. And just surreptitiously on your phone, be just with, with the highest res image possible. Yeah, just keep and then send them prints of themselves. Yeah, shopping you could and just stuff. you could you could <laughs> if you combine this with a Spezo, a Doctor Spezo like yeah. sort of survey- how was camp- Golden Gate Park <laughs> yesterday <laughs> and then like what I was and then as they say that their e- an email pops up in their inbox right or their fax machine goes off yeah and sends oh god yeah right. definite fax machine situation oh yeah oh yeah. yeah. What's scary Please about- plug in this fax machine, Amazon Prime. <laughs> now, hi there, fax machine, and then uh, it, yeah, it prints out a picture of them. Oh, yeah, we're d- this. The world is definitely <laughs> providing the tools to become a terrible, weird gaslighter 
of your friends and family members. The world has already provided those tools in full. Yeah, but now you just, you can do it on your phone. That's true. I mean, on your fucking telephone. On your fucking telephone. (laughs) Yep. So this is, has this thing been around a while? I don't think so. Um, what is it called? Spy me sat. Oh, spy me sat. Yeah. Ah. I looked up spy sat me. Oh, and well. I, excuse, excuse me for getting it wrong earlier. Spy me sat. I was trying to hide it from Nielsen ratings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, it just looks like it's it looks like it's pronounced spy me sat. Mm. It's a bad name. It's a really terrible name. <laughs> this yeah, episode is folding in on itself really badly. The, where we're talking about not knowing how to pronounce a word and it hiding <laughs> itself true. from it ratings like, and it launched uh, in 2013. It looks like their their slogan on their website is "Know when a satellite could be imaging you," which feels really emblematic of the way all this shit works now. Mm. Which is that it's sort of it's like the top line way that they're justifying and selling it is like it's just a tool. So you, it's like yeah. um, it's like the police scanner. That's like, oh, it's like a personal liberty thing. So you know what? No, it's right. not. It's so you can fucking speed and just know when there's not. Like, everyone knows that's what it's for. Like, this, it's like, oh, it's just so you can be aware of, like, when there could be a satellite. Except that's worthless because what can you do about it? Literally nothing. Uh, you can monetize it by buying a print yeah, of it. Yeah, exa- yep. well, right. I mean, you can use it for your own weird ends is actually yeah. really what it's for. Mm-hmm. They just, it sounds better if they pitch it as something that's like... You know, keep abreast with the you know everything that's going on with in the, the world. Surveillance state. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> but why keep abreast? Uh, why merely keep abreast of the surveillance state when you could monetize it for your own? <laughs> yeah, when you could join in. Yeah. <sighs> yep. Print it out. <laughs> um, all right. Four X optical zoom. Four thousand X optical zoom. zoom. Schneider lens. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Uh, that's that's probably it. For that's this, totally this week. it. So important yeah. if true. Look at that horse. <laughs> Satellite <laughs> zooms in on a picture of a horse. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Karen tells me that uh, it's, it's a butterfly. Uh, <laughs> zoom zooms in on. Uh, <laughs> I may in fact be a moth. Fuck, this is a disaster. Okay, yeah, thank you for done. listening to Important If True. Oh, what if memes all collapsed in on themselves yeah. and became a bad meme singularity? Yeah, what if they became a podcast? Rate and review us on iTunes if you if you want to. Um, give us a better than average review if, it, if, if you can stand to. Um, Spell our name correctly. Yeah. Our website is importantiftrue.com and there... On all of the episode pages, you can find links to everything that was discussed and endorsed on that week's episode. Um, if you watch this on, on YouTube, we've seen some people uh, ask about where those links are. If you are a YouTube watcher, you can just go to our website, importantfrew.com, and all of the descriptions are there on those pages. That's also linked in the description for our episode. That's probably the only link in the episode description. Yeah, that's true. Um, in any case, no matter how you listen or watch this show, thank you for doing it. It means a lot to us. Um, and your word of mouth is the only way anyone else really learns about it. So thank you. Um, you can send us your questions. If you need our explanations, advice, interpretations of things, you can email those to questions at importantiftrue.com and we will do our best. And on that, I think we'll be back next week for another episode. For uh, for Idle Thumbs, I'm Chris Remo. I'm Nick Brecken. I'm Jake Rodkin. Well, I mean, I, now that more uh, more Americans on average are saying stay spicy than ever before, <laughs> I think that I'll, I'll say stay spicy. Oh, thanks, Jake. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh no, I'm sinking in my chair. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Goodbye, Nick. Oh, bye. <laughs> I'll always remember your dots. <laughs> they were good ones. <laughs> <laughs>